Now we're out at the fuel island and wanted to demonstrate the uh, the fuel point operation of the system. Um, you got a chance to see how we uh, fuel with the card reader. Now we're going to show you how we're going to fuel with the fuel point. Um, the components of this, we have the, the devices in, installed in the vehicle itself that are monitoring for a, uh, a nozzle and pulling in data out of the, the, the data bus of the vehicle itself. We have a reader on the nozzle itself on the pump. And we have a reader up in the uh, air, which is a WGT is the terminology, which is a wireless gateway terminal. Uh, pull this all together. When the vehicle drives into the bay, that wireless gateway sees that vehicle, identifies that vehicle, and pulls the data right at that moment in time so that we can see that vehicle number, and in this case it's 100066, has pulled onto the island. All right, and has now parked. The WGT knows that and is basically waiting for the rest of this transaction. To complete the transaction, we take our nozzle, okay? We hold it in hand. We a special note that we have an LED light, it's a little green LED light on the uh, side of the nozzle reader. I'm gonna remove the tank. I'm gonna remove the cap on the tank, I mean. And what I'm looking for when I insert the nozzle into the tank is two distinct Green blinks on the green light. When I see those two blinks, I indicate that that has been read. And now, if I turn the handle on the pump on, the vehicle will actually be fueled. Okay? The information has been transferred out of the vehicle's data pass through the nozzle, on from the nozzle up to the WGT itself. And then ultimately, when the transaction completes, it will allow us to capture that sale into the Fleet Head Office database. And that is a transaction from the fuel point. Now, we are fueling on the master side of this particular truck. The master side of the truck has the data pass connected to it that has the tie into the vehicle's um, data bus, etc. We're now over at the satellite side of the tank, or of the vehicle. Basically what it amounts to is now we repeat the process from the satellite side of the vehicle. It is um, um, going to re require the nozzle reader be inserted into the tank. We're going to look for the two green blinks of the lights and we're going to fuel the vehicle. If you have dual tanks on a vehicle, it is recommended that you fuel from both sides always. This way we assure complete data transfer uh, from the vehicle on into our database for uh, accountability. So once I've inserted it, my tank is almost full, but you can see that I am pumping. Okay. So that's the satellite side of it. We're going to take a minute and we're going to show you uh, uh, the procedure for fueling one of the reefer trailers. Uh, in the case of fueling a reefer trailer, we are also using the fuel pass and data pass uh, uh, system. Um, the data pass is actually installed in the reefer module itself okay, and powered by that as well. Um, to assure proper fueling, you must cycle the power to the reefer um, at least within 15 to 20 minutes of the fueling to assure that the uh, uh, data pass has been re-energized. Uh, there is a power off feature to the data pass that prevents it from powering down or uh, draining the battery in the case of it not being uh, used at the moment or fueling at the moment. So anyway, to do that, you simply turn it on, you wait for the reefer to start. Once it starts, we know that we have energized the data pass and we have about 15 to 20 minutes to fuel. And you can hear the buzz. And we should be starting in a moment. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Now that we know the data pass has been energized, we can now go to the pump and we should be able to fuel. We remove the cap from the tank. The tank has been equipped with a fuel pass. We take the nozzle out of the dispenser, we turn the handle on, and we insert into the tank. As with the tractor, we wait for the activation for the pump. You hear the click, you saw the lights, we have a reset to zero, 
and we pump our fuel. For security purposes, the wire that has been uh, um, uh, that is attached to the fuel pass ring ties in and is spliced into a small chip. That small chip houses or holds the actual information for the vehicle and actually is the tie-in to the actual uh, um, data pass unit which is mounted up in the uh, front uh, reefer uh, cabinet. Okay, This chip needs to be mounted securely to the frame of the vehicle uh, so that it cannot be uh, um, easily removed. Um, if there was somewhat of a tampering or someone tried to steal this chip, it has been designed to actually self-destruct in the event that someone would try to steal this ring and it self-destructs, it renders it useless. The data pass that we keep referring to for this vehicle, which holds the information uh, for the vehicle number, ties into the data bus of the truck itself, actually is mounted inside the cab of the vehicle. Typical locations would either be under the, under the dash on the uh, driver's side by the steering wheel, or sometimes they're also located on the passenger side behind the cover right by the fuse panel. Uh, that would pretty much depend on the easiest method for the installation at the time.